Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. If this is your first time here, then hi, my name is Roisin and I'm really glad you clicked on this video. Today I'm filming for you a little check-in in how my no-buy that I've been on for the month of September has gone. So I started this no-buy at the beginning of August, so I've already done my August check-in and my intro obviously to saying I was going on a no-buy. I will link both of those videos up in the eye if you haven't seen them to put this into context for you. But yeah, if you're all caught up and you know the context and everything, let's just get into chatting about how my no-buy went in the month of September. Now, basically to continue from what I said last month, overall, it has been fine. So I am not new to doing no-buys. Obviously, if you've been with me for a while, you will know that. I have been on year-long no-buys in the past. So I feel like for me, it's almost as if the no buy is like a muscle that has just been reawakened and I have been able to sort of slip back into doing that. Last month I was really aware that I was on a no buy and I had to kind of actively be thinking about it. This month it almost got to a point where I kind of forgot I was on a no buy in a lot of ways. Like it was almost just like last month we sort of turned off the shopping behaviours for the most part and went into a headspace of being like, this is just not something we are spending time on right now. It's not something we're putting energy into. And like, as if by this month, I had kind of fallen into that and accepted that. It was actually something I was so unaware of that I almost broke it through sort of general thoughtlessness. Thoughtlessness? It was a stationery shop that I almost broke it in, so it wasn't like fashion or beauty. And I think I would have probably been more aware of it if it had been like, I was nearly buying a pair of shoes or a dress or a lipstick or something because that to me is like the problem categories in my mind. Whereas I was in a stationery shop, as I said in my last month's check-in, I am doing some courses this year, some new qualifications. So I was doing the sort of back to school thing. There was a couple of things I genuinely did actually need. So I was in the stationery shop to get them and then I sort of started picking up just nice stationery and I actually had to kind of like engage my brain and go no we're not buying things that we don't need right now we are on a no buy and I am actually allowed to buy stationery that would be coming out of my budget although there are things that I am budgeting for and I will be doing a budget check-in video with you I know I didn't end up doing one for last month so I'll do the two month check-in in one video for that but although I've got the allowance of the budget for stationery books etc I am still particularly where like stationery is concerned trying to just buy things if I genuinely need them. So like I bought some academic diaries last month. I'm trying not to, just because the budget is there, spend it on things that I don't actually need and try to just stop the flow of things coming in. So I did, I did engage my brain, remember that we're not doing that right now and put it back. But it was almost like I, I was so, kind of so deeply into it, it was almost subconscious. You know, I had to actively think about it, that I was on a no buy when I had to stop myself buying the stationery. But I've not had a lot of inclination this month towards many other things. There was one big test. There's a couple of things that I do want but that I've not felt particularly tested by. And then there was just the environment that I was living in this month. There was what else was going on. So let me go through all three of those things individually. First of all, in terms of the environment. So as I said, I've started some new qualifications this year. So my classes started this month. Um, so last month I was already kind of aware of them because I'd started paying fees. So this month the actual classes started. So that meant A, my time was taken up with those classes. I didn't, I no longer have the free time that I would have had. I'm also, yes, still got fees to pay. So I'm paying it in instalments. So I've got a big chunk of fees coming off every single month that is obviously an expense that wasn't coming off before. Um, and because the classes have started this month, I have got four reading lists that I need to purchase. So I've started making some of those purchases. Some of them will be made technically next month because I will get paid tomorrow actually on Monday the, the 30th. I am filming this check-in a whole day early but I feel like things aren't going to go to pot tomorrow, touch wood. So I, I feel like it's fine. We can, we can check in today. It's okay. That's been happening there's been a lot of expenses going on so I feel like although I've not been buying things I, I haven't been sitting here feeling like oh my bank account's looking really good I could treat myself it's like not we're just not in a, a space right now where I could be treating myself anyway because the money is being spent on other things 
and that's going to continue to be in my environment for quite a while because as I said I've got other books that I'm going to buy next month so I kind of bought the essential ones this month I'll probably buy the recommended ones next month I've got more course fees to pay next month and I've also got four trips coming up between now and the end of the year and the balance of those trips I think two of them need paid in full next month and two need paid the month after but also one of them is in November like the first one's in November so I also need to then start paying to go on the trips so I feel like there's it's just quite an expensive time for me at this point right now which is maybe helping me with the no buy because there's not a lot of money sitting in my bank to tempt me to be able to spend on things so that's possibly part of it the things that I have wanted that have not been a huge challenge over the last number of years I've done various low buys and no buys I've been really really trying to change my consumer habits and one of the ways that I would say that that has changed is that I don't really spend a lot of time looking at high street things anymore. Now that's not to say that I never look at them. I mean I did talk in last month's check-in about um, some items from River Island that I'd seen a blogger that I like. She had bought them and she had put them on her channel and I was like oh I really like them and I was very tempted to get them. But I feel like I don't actively go on like River Island's website and look at what they've got. I need to be physically passing the shop and have something catch my eye or I would need to be shown it. Um, you know, it would need to be somebody that I follow on Instagram or whatever was wearing it or somebody who I follow on YouTube, as was the case last month, had bought something and was showing it. Um, it's just not... I'm, I got out of the habit of casually shopping and I think for me part of that as well is that it's almost a defence thing because I know when I want something that's from say River Island or Zara or I was going to say Topshop because I feel like even all these years later that it's not been a high street store for that's like my go-to high street store that I still reference probably showing my age here but I know with those kind of shops like H&M or whatever there is a high stock turnover if I see something I know I need to get into the headspace of being like well I need to get that because that could possibly not be here next week you know the the turnover is so so quick whereas I feel like now a lot of the brands that I am looking at and following although the annoying thing is that they are more expensive and I probably need to find somewhere in the middle that's not quite talking about paying you know really high prices for things constantly because that's not very realistic you know to consistently be buying things at that kind of price point but it is slower and it, it gets me out of that sort of feeling of like oh my god I must purchase this and I must purchase it now because I'm going to lose it if I don't you know that just isn't as much of a factor with some of the things that I like now so the two things that I'm looking at specifically this month that have come up well first of all it's a pair of shoes that I've actually been looking at on and off for a couple of months to be honest I'm not quite sure why I didn't just buy them in July when I was still buying things before I went on to the no buy but I think I kind of knew I needed to get on to the no buy was probably why when I'd first seen them. So they're a pair of Jean Vito Rossi Mary Jane shoes. They are patent which I do not historically have a great relationship with in shoes because I have quite wide feet so patent has very little give but I have bought a few pair of Jean Vito Rossi shoes this year and I'm finding I really like them and they suit my feet and whatever so I'm quite keen to take the plunge. I'm also just generally as you'll be aware, looking for a nude shoe from to replace a pair that I broke. Well, I didn't broke the... I didn't broke? God, that was dreadful English. They broke themselves. You know, the, the sole gave way. You know, I didn't actively go out there and try and break them. I am still looking to replace them in these Jean Vito Rossi Mary Janes. I'll put them up on the screen so you can see them. Would, I think, function as a replacement. There is another pair of shoes that I like from Aquazura, so I will put them up as well. These are the two pairs of shoes that I'm between. I do think the Jean Vito Rossi ones because they've got the strap are going to suit my feet a little bit more and be a little bit comfier because they're the chunkier heel as well. So that's what I'm kind of leaning towards but I know they're not going to sell out. Now I do have a little bit of fear around them because I can only see them in stock on one website. I can't see them at any of the others. So I know there's not a lot of them but I also know they're not like a pair of Zara shoes that's going to sell out in a week. You know they've I've been looking at them for a couple of months now they're going to be there next month when I come off my no buy if I decide I want to buy them so by next month I mean November and um, 
I will be continuing this no buy into October as planned. The other things that I was quite tempted by this month but that weren't a huge issue for me were some items of knitwear. So it's coming into that time of year, it's definitely getting colder. I tend to live in knitwear from kind of around this time of year through to next spring. Certainly for work kind of Monday to Friday that's what I'm wearing is jeans, boots and some kind of jumper or cardigan situation. Definitely had a bit of a poncho for the twin set which I have been looking for one for a while now and I saw some last winter from Rock and Romance Vintage and really liked them, sort of earmarked them to, to come back to. So it's now this time of year again, I've come back to them and I still quite fancy them. So I would wear the jumpers and the cardigans separately, that I think is part of what makes them quite a good buy. I've liked them for over a year, I would wear the two items separately, but I think I would also wear them together in that sort of traditional twin set look. They're little sort of cropped 1940s short sleeve jumpers, then cardigans in corresponding colours. This year they have one in a colour called gingerbread, which is just so up my street. So particularly the gingerbread combo is the one that I really want, that I would definitely start with. It is the sort of item that I could see me purchasing more than one colour of and I think I would get quite a lot of wear from. The jumpers and cardigans aren't as expensive as the shoes because it's not a designer brand as such. What I find with a lot of these sort of vintage reproduction brands that I really like is that they tend to have sort of staple items and these knitwear pieces are part of that so they were around last winter they're around again this winter they've actually expanded the colors they're doing them in this winter so they must be quite popular items so i just don't feel that sort of rush to need to purchase them right now i would definitely like to purchase them if they're something that i want to bring in but i'm okay with waiting and that's that's i think the thing that being on no buys in the past has taught me is that it's okay to wait but definitely part of what has made it okay to wait is that I think I have shifted to an extent a lot of the brands that I would have spent my time looking at. I no longer spend as much time looking at the high street because I know that that's going to instill that sort of fear of the, the missing out and knowing that things are going to move really quickly. And as I say, it's not feasible for me to consistently buy designer options. Um, so I do need to try and find things at a more high street price that move a little bit more slowly in the long run and I'm not quite sure that I've found those exact brands yet to become my sort of go-tos but I do think it's one of the things that makes switching into the no buy mode easier for me is that I'm not looking at those brands all the time, I'm not looking at those fast moving fast fashion brands so I'm not being as tempted to be sucked into the cycle. However as I mentioned I did have one quite significant challenge and that was that I got some really good news this month, potentially like the best career related news ever. I can't count my eggs before they're hatched so it isn't a definite offer of something. I can't, oh I'm, I'm trying to like not say what it is without, anyway, it doesn't really matter what it is. It's like the first step towards something that I really, 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 really want, something that I have always wanted. Like, yeah, really amazing news. And I really wanted to mark that. It feels like progress. It, it feels like it's putting things that I do want, like, closer to being within my reach. It is not exactly the end goal that I want, but it's the stepping stone towards the end goal. And yeah, I really want something to signify it. This feels like a really significant moment in my career. I feel like, you know, in three or four years time, I could be talking about this offer that I've had this month as being the moment that things changed. You know, it's, it's huge. I feel like it deserves to be marked and I'm on a no buy, so I, I can't do that. And I, it sounds really silly because the thing doesn't go away so I could buy something in six months time and say right that is the thing that I'm buying to commemorate this to you know that I achieved this that this goal was hit but it feels weird to buy it in six months after having done it do you know what I mean it feels like the buying of something to celebrate it should be entwined with the time frame that it has happened in the offer that I've had the 
doesn't actually start until January. It runs January to April, so I could buy something at the end of April to commemorate it. But I feel like what I want to commemorate is the achievement of getting onto it, onto having the opportunity, not necessarily what I make of the opportunity. So I don't want, like, that would almost be a different thing, if that makes any sense. So I feel like what I want to celebrate is the achievement of getting it in the first place. And I can't. And it's really interesting, I think, because on the flip side, something horrible happened to me at the start of April, um, which, again, I don't want to go into any details of. And it's funny because, like, my spending went out of control towards the end of April, but I actually don't think it was related to that because Lauren said to me at the time, like, oh, are you going to buy yourself something to make yourself feel better? And I was actively like, no, because I don't want anything a nothing's going to make me feel better it was just a horrible situation but b i didn't want anything that i was looking at to be the thing that was going to signify i bought that to make me feel better and be a reminder of that i did not want that at all now it maybe is slightly delusional for me to be saying that i don't think that bad thing happening at the start of april coincides with the fact that my spending started to go out of control towards the end of April. Um, first of all, I think if it if it had been really interlinked, I think it would have been a knee-jerk reaction. I think it would have happened at the same time. But there there was quite a, a number of weeks between the bad thing that happened at the start and me buying the vampire's wife dress when matches went into liquidation. So I do think it is it has just been matches went into liquidation then the vampire's wife themselves went into liquidation i was in london at the time of that sample sale and that was that was the catalyst and after that i was in the habit of spending money again and that's really where my spending went a bit mad and i think although the thing happened at the start of april that i absolutely did not want to to document in any way shape or form I think it's just coincidental timing of those things shutting down and the opportunities to purchase those dresses from the vampire's wife before they were going to be gone forever came up and I wanted to, to grab them. So I think that just, that was just kind of unfortunate timing. I don't think the two are interlinked. Possibly it is a bit delusional. If it is delusional, I'm still deluded with it. I don't know. I, I'm leaving room to say that maybe they're more linked than I think they are. But I don't believe they are. And part of that is because, to go back to what I've said earlier about the way that I have changed how I look at things and the brands that I'm looking at and the types of shops that I'm looking at, I knew when Lauren said to me like, oh, are you going to get yourself something to cheer yourself up? Like, when I thought of everything that I wanted, it was like long-term wish list items. So it was those big ticket items. I knew because I'd wanted those things for so long. I knew if I bought one of those things, it, I was going to have it for years. And I did not want to buy something and have it for years and be reminded of this horrible thing that had happened. Whereas maybe in the past, I could have bought myself something. Or no, I could have. I would have probably bought myself something because I bought so frequently and so in response to my moods. And I had so much stuff that I probably couldn't even have told you two weeks later why I'd purchased an item that I'd purchased two weeks before. You know, what it was, what had triggered me, what had upset me that day. You know, like I was, when particularly in 2016 when it was really bad, I mean I was medically depressed. You know, I was never happy and I was grasping at the idea of, of shopping to to make me happy which was never going to work even though I literally kept doing it again and again and again because I got this little speck of happiness the moment that the bag was handed over I got this tiny high and I kept chasing it because it was the only thing that that actually for half a second did feel that it lifted me a little bit whereas I don't have those kind of feelings now about shopping and I'm not in that headspace anymore so although this horrible thing did happen at the start of April I was much more rationally like nothing I buy is going to make this better. Nothing is going to improve this. The whole thing was just horrible. It was terrible. It was really upsetting. And nothing was going to make that better. Um, and I'm still upset about it, to be honest, months later. 
So nothing that I've bought in between then and now has made me feel better and nothing was bought with the intention of making me feel better. But this is like the opposite thing that's happened this month, like something really, really good has happened. And I'd, I'd have liked to have marked it and I can't. And I don't really have a conclusion to come to on that. It's just, that's the thing when you're doing a no buy check and you're just acknowledging what has happened in real time or within the month that it has happened. It's something I want to mark. It's something I feel really proud of. It's something that could be absolutely massive for me professionally and personally about the whole, it could really impact the whole direction that my life's going to take. And I, I think it's, it's something I would like to mark, but I right now can't. So that's where we are with that. And I'm not going to be marking it anytime soon because as I've said, I am extending the no buy into October. I do think possibly October things will maybe get a little bit more difficult because we're going into autumn winter and that's what I love. I love autumn winter clothes and colours. Like I'm not a spring summer kind of person. I, I like knitwear and coats and burgundy seems to be the, the colour of the season this year and like burgundy is one of my favourite, favourite, favourite colours. Burgundy, forest green, gingerbread, that's my vibe. You know, that that's where I really will struggle. And the other thing, like the sort of fashion side, thing, side of things aside, that was a lot of sides, is that the Christmas sets start launching. So generally the Christmas gift sets, beauty wise, that come out are very good value for money. That's all going to maybe tempt me a little bit more this month than has been an issue in previous months. However, as I've said, next month is still going to be a really expensive month for me between uni and paying off my trips and also probably trying to put a little bit of money aside for going on the trip that starts in November or maybe trying to pay off one of the other ones a little bit earlier or whatever. So there's that. I won't have a lot of disposable income so maybe I won't be as tempted. And then also I will be busy. So now Monday to Thursday, I will be at work during the day and doing some kind of class every single night. Then obviously still at work again on Friday. So really my free time now is like Friday night, Saturday and Sunday. And I need to study. And as, you know, I'm doing these two courses. I need to also hit a certain number of study hours in my free time. So I'm probably not going to have a lot of time as much as I'm saying there will be more things in the shops that I would be tempted by. I'm probably not going to be in the actual shops all that much. So... It might not be an issue, I'm not sure. The sort of specific item that I think might be an issue is a coat from a brand called Miss Candy Floss, which I have a couple of bits and pieces from. It's a brand I really like as much as I loathe the name. The name is dreadful. But they have got, I have been saying for a few years now, I would really like a faux fur coat that looks like a vintage faux fur coat and is shaped to come like in at the waist and back out. So a lot of the faux fur coats are very straight up and down not particularly flattering to my figure and in their catalogue or their lookbook for this season it looks like they're releasing a faux fur coat that has a bit of shape to it. There's only one image in the lookbook so I would want to see more than one image before I'd be making a decision but I am very very interested in it. I could be very tempted by it and Miss Candy Floss although it's one of those vintage reproduction -y brands that tend not to have quite as high a turnover they seem to be the exception. They don't seem to get a lot of stock of each of their things, particularly their sort of seasonal things, like especially coats. If you don't move quickly on a coat, you kind of tend to lose it, is my experience with Miss Candy Floss. If that comes out this month, yeah, that's going to be really, really tough. Um, if it comes out and with further images, if it looks like it's what I want it to be, because that's that's one of those items that I've wanted for years and it's sort of one of those unicorn items that has never really existed. So if this turns out to be the one, that's going to be difficult. Um, but we'll see, it might not come out this month. They haven't released a schedule of when things will be coming out. They just do drops every so often. So we'll see what happens, but that is the only sort of specific thing that I think if it comes out will tempt me but in general we are going into a time of year that I am excited about what's available and will be tempted so next month could be a lot more difficult or it might be fine because I might have no time to be looking at anything anyway 
I don't quite know, could go either way. But yeah, that is everything that I have got to fill you in on for this month. I don't know how helpful this will have been to anyone who's on an OBI, especially if you're on an OBI for the first time, because I feel like this is me as a sort of seasoned no buyer talking about kind of falling back into that routine for the most part and how I'm used to being in that space and kind of almost like kind of so subconsciously went into it that I forgot I was in it at points so yeah I don't know how helpful it'll been but thank you very much for watching it anyway I hope you've enjoyed it and I will speak to you in my next video bye